attacks, over 40,000 of them. The news, even mainstream dinosaur media even admits, as we told you months before it would happen in Libya. Uh, Al-Qaeda's flags are flying everywhere. The women are having burqas put on their heads. Women are being kicked out of the colleges. It's like Afghanistan or something. Uh, same thing in Egypt uh, to a lesser degree. Same thing. Al-Qaeda that the criminal hijackers of the U.S. government, NATO, have said on record are going to expel all Christians and they're some of the oldest Christian communities in the world in Syria. Huge Christian community, lives in total peace. You know, pre-Muhammad Christian groups. Uh, they're going to be expelled and the Jews are to be held and killed. This is the main group our criminal government is funding on record. I mean, look this up, folks. You, We've got articles at Infowars.com where mainline journalistic groups admit this. I'm ranting. It's just so criminal. And then I was reading Fareed. Zarkaya, that, that CNN puppet that nobody watches, who I ran into in a CNN green room one time in New York last year, flipped out on me, knew full well who I was. He's been at Bilderberg, one of the few token media people, two or three a year that go. He says, quote, and the article in the video is up on Infowars.com right now, starve Syria. He says militarily blockade food and medicine like they did Iraq uh, for more than a decade before bombarding it again. And again, Saddam put in by the CIA, shut up, all of that, told to invade Kuwait, look it up, April Gillespie. I mean, this is so evil, ladies and gentlemen. So incredibly off the charts evil. Aaron is going to be talking about that. Uh, the big news is people first saw a report on this, some of them, and said, why would they be shooting their mouth off about Ron Paul at a Bilderberg meeting? You drive through, you see Ron Paul and, and Infowars.com stickers everywhere. You're being yelled at. When they get out of their cars after driving through the gauntlet our bullhorns on the street, and people jumping in front of them, the cops dragging them off and all this, they get out, and high-level Bilderberg people would cuss and yell and say, I'm sick of Ron Paul, I hate him, because we got people in the hotel. Well, Jim Tucker, he went in a week, because he lives there in Virginia, was handing out cards. Hey, call me when they're rude to you. Call me when they say you can't look in their eyes. Call me when they treat you like filth. That's how journalists do it, and they call you. My source confirmed what Tucker said. He said, yeah, they use Ron Paul like an expletive. When they get out, they're real mad, some of them. And they sit around and talk talk garbage. Can you imagine to who? Bellhops, people like that. I could say bellhop because there's so many in the hotel, they won't be able to nail it down. Uh, they shoot their mouth off in the bar to waiters. I'll leave it at that. I mean, we've had dinner with some of these people at like 2 a.m., okay? And we got some hardcore stuff. And it's already been transmitted to the office. You can't pull us over and do stuff to us to stop us from getting out, Okay. I want to say that to the Bilderberg group as well. But we've got it. We know how to get it, okay? Because they treat these people, people like, no way I'm not talking to you. And we just go, just take the card. We're not offering you money. When you hear how evil they are, you're going to want to call us. And they do. Just like the cops have been around them now and are suddenly on our side. These are some, look, these are arrogant people that are for killing 90% of the world's population in their official reports, UN, you name it. So I'm ranting. We're coming back going to your calls. The point is, headline, Bilderberg group wants Ron Paul dead. InfoWars headline was Bilderberg share Ron Paul death wish. And they would get out after being bullhorned, all these big Ron Paul banners and InfoWars banners. They would get out other cars because, you know, they come through, they drive through the 200 yards or so around to the front of the big conference Marriott Luxury Center. And they get out and started saying, one German guy said, I want to put Ron Paul on plane with all his supporters. And once they reach over... The ocean, the Atlantic, blow it up and blame it on Al-Qaeda. I mean, this was heard. Now, my source didn't confirm that, but he said, yes, they're very angry at Ron Paul over cussing his name. All right, we're going to come back, go to your phone calls, and a ton more. I haven't scratched the surface. Your calls. You've heard Alex explain how the Silver Lungs Generator... All right, we are back live. I'm going to go to your calls now, right into the next hour, and a ton of other news items. But record numbers of Russians, Chinese nationals... Syrians, Israelis uh, at this Bilderberg group meeting, unprecedented. And that means invasions all over the place. And again, foreign mega banks, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, who are now openly merging their dynasties. The Rockefellers have always been their front. Just as I told you, Google was NSA. Now it's admitted. Folks, this is, this is real, okay? Uh, they are, again, hopping mad that Bilderberg's been blown wide open and is in hundreds of publications in the U.S., hundreds and hundreds overseas. 
dozens of big papers. And I want to commend DrudgeReport.com for helping break the Berlin Wall uh, of the blackout. The Washington Times was the first mainstream publication to do it this week. Uh, the London Guardian as well. Uh, WorldNet Daily, WND.com. Uh, of course, uh, so many others. Bizarrely, Glenn Beck's people came out and made jokes about it, I guess because they support Huntsman, who was also there. And bizarrely, uh, Tucker Carlson, who top Republicans believe is a Democratic operative, I've been told that by high-level sources, uh, the Daily Caller was out there saying it didn't exist. So very bizarre uh, to have the London Guardian reporting on it very seriously, Washington Times, Drudge Report, and then libertarian groups supposedly running around saying it doesn't exist. Uh, very bizarre, but I guess that's because the one of the founders of uh, a lot of the online banking systems uh, is uh, there and wants to kind of co-opt the libertarian movement, Mr. Thiel. Okay, uh, with, uh, without further ado, got a lot of other news coming up, uh, but right now let's go to Toby in Pennsylvania, Mark uh, Sholiak, Rick, Vinny, and others. Uh, Toby, you're on the air. Welcome. Were you at Bilderberg 2012, my friend? Yes, I was. What did and, uh, you make of it? Give us your report. Oh, no. Um, I thought it was great. You were great. And uh, I was there uh, at the time when the sprinklers went off and you went over to the police. Man, when the, on the, oh, yeah, they turned the sprinklers on. Yeah, us. That do, was do you think funny. they turned them on or is that a time thing? What do you think? I don't know. The world will never know. I only focus on what I can uh, document. But um, you know, I should I'm, add, again, most people that were there only came through for a day. And we had up to 600 people at one time. It had to be two, 3,000 people um, that were there over the five days. It was incredible. And another thing, um, today I was there for a couple of hours from uh, like 10 to 12, and um, a jogger happened to be running by while the one protester was um, protesting. And as he ran by, he called him a crackpot. And that just, it just turned into a big thing. I mean, he came back. Uh, the protester said something to him. He came back, and he was, like, in that protester's face, like, ready to fight him. And it was just, well, there are a lot of people that work there. for the system. There's a lot of people who work for the system. They think they're part of it, and they get off on the shadow power. It's like the Marines, well, one of the biggest groups of listeners we have on average, but the, the, the diplomatic security detail they had in plain clothes, um, who flipped us off four years ago and all that, they were laughing at us. It was funny. They were coming out in the crowd. They'd say, oh, I'm a big fan, then grab my hand and try to crush it, and we're just stirring up trouble. Uh, it was really sad. It was really, really sad. But, yeah, I mean, people that cuddle up to tyranny, they got plenty of them in North Korea. They're very sad. I appreciate I appreciate your call. I got to say, though, the best police I've ever seen, and then I learned why later. They're listeners. Uh, but they would tell me. In fact, some of this on live stream video, you know, we're streaming out there. they go, in fact, some of the head guys, one captain's like, Look, we're getting watched by that live video camera across the street with audio. I'm going to get in a lot of trouble if, uh, if I don't keep you guys out of the street. And plus, you don't want to get run over, so I get their whole point. And overall, again, some of the protesters who were younger, some of the younger cops were bugging their eyes out and everything, and there was a few arguments there. But that's just what happens because the cops are hearing us bullhorn, the Bilderberg group, calling them scum for days. And the more younger and more unsophisticated cops thought we were talking about them. So, but overall, it was it was a big victory. Well, let's go to another call here. Uh, it's a microcosm of the world. I mean, in fact, if I told you all the cop stories, you wouldn't believe them. It was amazing. Basically, the whole SWAT team are daily listeners. Uh, let's talk to Mark in Virginia. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air, Mark. Hey, Alex. I got to meet you uh, yesterday. It was great. Uh, the whole thing was... Just fantastic. I talked to somebody who was there last year. They said you had about 10 times as many people this year. And also they erected the fence this year, last year. I guess there was no fence. Is that right? Yeah, because it's on a big piece of property, usually 200, 300 yards from the road. There's only one spot that's close to the road. And uh, that happens to be where the conference wing is, so we can bullhorn them perfectly there. And Kissinger came out and was real mad this year. I mean, we nonstop ruined their entire conference. I mean, believe me, the, the windows were shaking. Had you ever heard anything as loud as 20 bullhorns going at once in unison? It was amazing. I'm, I'm, up, I'm uploading video right now. What I'm, I entitled uh, Bilderberg 2012, or well, Bilderberg Protest 2012, Approaching the Storm. And that's what it was like for me when I first came in yesterday. I walked, you know, it's about a quarter mile walk when you first You could hear there. it a quarter it's mile just, away. Definitely. 
And it uh, was I, amazing. I, I mean, describe that for people that were there, because it was actually, I only get a migraine headache about once a year, and it's usually when I bike ride when there's heavy pollen, and I get a, I had migraines, you saw where I had to lay down to make the migraine go away because it was so loud. I was giving me migraines. I mean, it, I, my ears are ringing right now. The entire crew's ears are ringing. I believe that I get migraines too. I know what that's like, but yeah, uh, I, I had, I couldn't stay around there for too long either. And I just had to go back. It was more peaceful. I actually got my guitar. I was playing at the other end, but that uh, was insane. I mean, the London guardian described it as that testosterone fueled rage. I mean, it was, this is, I love hippies. They're good folks. There were some of them there, but this was how the Patriots, this is how the gun-toting, John Deere hat-wearing, anti-New World Order, I mean, look out world when the Patriots start protesting. This was insane. This was insane. Definitely. I'm sorry, what were you saying? Uh, this was the spirit of 1776. That's what it was like. You were you know, just routing the royalists. It, it was just It awesome. was incredible. God bless you, my friend. Amazing talking to you. Network, uh, Richard's gone. I don't know how to work all this fancy equipment. Can somebody boost my audio a little bit? I can barely hear the callers. Of course, it's probably because I'm deaf. <laughs> probably because I'm deaf. <laughs> Aaron, have you ever heard anything this loud? No, it was incredible. You're going to be on later. I want you to write a note and talk about that. Uh, it was just amazing. Uh, that's probably it. I'm probably deaf. <laughs> I'm doing this via... Uh, Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and go to uh, Sholiak in Pennsylvania. I met this guy. Sholiak, what'd you think of it? Uh, Alex, um, I, I can only, like last night, um, you know, the, during the day, the, it was just electric. There was so much excitement. Um, you know, after it broke down last night, I went out with uh, and hung out with, you know, what appeared to be like complete strangers, but because we're all focused, on what the real problems are in this world, we know it. It just really felt like I was looking at these people, and I'm like, why is it that I feel like just so at home and like these people, like I've known them my whole life? And I think that... Was no, I was almost... Uh, in fact, I kept, I, I kept getting tears in my eyes talking to people. I mean, you talk about real brotherly love, black, white, Hispanic, you, you name it. I mean, this was America. This is what the global estate. This is the this is the crucifix that can bring them down. This is it. This is America. This is 1776. I can't describe it. It was so incredible. I mean, you go to some establishment socialist thing or something, there's a bunch of angry weirdos Founding father stuff. I mean, am I hyping that, or, or, or is that what it was? No, I mean, it was, uh, I was, like yesterday, I mean, I got some lower back issues, so um, I was debating on whether to come back last night after I went up to the roadhouse. But I was sitting there, and I was talking to some guys that were in the military, and that kind of inspired me. And then you popped in there, and you started talking to us, and it inspired me to just, and of course, there was a, a few, uh, I had a few drinks there that kind of numbed some of the back pain. But it just inspired me to get back down there. And yeah, I we were hanging out at the Texas Roadhouse. Was I was thinking about all the stuff that was going on. Like, tears came to my eye, too. Because I just got so inspired. Like, how could I even, you know, think about going and not coming back that night? Just talking to you and talking to everybody there. Feeling that, you know, that, uh, that want for freedom. The black, white, uh, Asian, uh, the guy from Germany. Well, I'll tell you what it is. The universe bends towards, I agree. I mean, the, uni the universe bends towards liberty and justice. And the Bilderberg Group, folks, and God bless you, my friend. It was good seeing you in Virginia. The Bilderberg Group openly wants to shut down the world economy, carbon taxes, post-industrial world, one-child policies. These are total tyrants. They now have announced our military works for the U.N. This is the group. This is the enemy. This is the corporate takeover. It's not the Chinese. It's not the Russians. It's the foreign bankers. They have already conquered this country. We've got to get it back. We'll be right back on the other side of this quick break. Lord willing, worldwide transmission. The answer to 1984 is 1776.